Welcome to Chewing the Cud with Mist Kinsman and Mike Benyon Rowe. And it turned out it wasn't KY, it was Deep Heat. Yeah. Been there ah, hello there. Welcome to Chewing the Cuds. I uh, hope you're doing well. They've actually invited me back for another week. Uh, what have you got for us today, Mike? This week I've got a story about an unlikely commuter. And then we have a special wish you a queer look at Portland, USA. And on screen now you should see all our social media contact info. Just look for at the Cud TV. And as names of people have dropped up a line and said, I love goal on the bottom of the screen, we go over to Mist and the Showbiz. So, we've got a new show coming to Netflix. Is it porn? Uh, it's not porn, but it does look quite saucy. It's a show called Everything Now. It's, um, I've seen the trailer for it. It's a really good trailer. It makes me quite excited about it. It looks a little bit like, do you remember Skins? I do remember Skins because it had the About a Boy Boy in it. Mm-hmm. And then the blonde boy that used to do ballet dancing. Mm-hmm. And a nice body. Yes. But yeah. But well, it's a Smorphia 101, I believe that show was called. <laughs> um, so it's that kind of style. It's that kind of sexy teenagers getting it on. The concept of the... It reminds me a bit of an old film called Girl Interrupted. Basically, the plot is this girl returns from a recovery for an eating disorder. Okay. And returns to her sixth form and everybody she knows has already moved on with their lives. Okay. And it's starring Sophie Wilde here. Uh, so her solution is to come up with a bucket list of things to catch up on. Oh, OK. Like being fingered at the back of the bike shed. Yeah, basically, things like oh, okay, that. OK, fair enough. It's very, very... From the trailer, it's it's very slickly done. It's it's quite saucy. <laughs> well, that's, that's good. You want a slick <laughs> finger. You don't want a gravelly fingering, do you? She, she licked first. Uh, <laughs> sorry. And that's going to be out on Netflix on October the 5th. <laughs> sorry, Netflix. <laughs> Getting fingered. Sorry, it made me chuckle. I'm a child. I don't care. Well, it's in the same vein as all of the all the shows that they've got going on now, like Sex Education and mm -hmm. Heartstopper. And it's really nice that they've got all this queer content going on because it is, from what I could see on the trailer, very, very queer. So it's, it's nice to have that thing, but it's a slightly more adult thing than uh, Heartstopper. So maybe a bit more enjoyable for uh, Lee. Well, probably, probably less um, emotional damaging. <laughs> Where did I not have this as a kid? Because I did get a finger at the back of my head. Um, so, <laughs> so it sounds like it's more reminiscent of the um, seminal work from Channel 4 of As If. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Very much in that vein. Good. And if For those, what I could tell, anyway. Those people I only don't know what that is. As If was a, was a brilliant Sunday morning TV that was very much young adults being young adults. Well, as, as Lee, uh, Lee has asked about Heartstopper, why are they not having sex yet? In this show, he will have that answered for them. I'm sure he will really enjoy that. <laughs> um, in other news, mm -hmm. um, we have Becky Hill. Now, she's uh, one of the runners-up from uh, The Voice UK when it was uh, on first series, BBC. OK, back when it was decent. Back when back. it was decent. There Decent's she is. A strong word. Um, she's actually she's done... a smiley face brazier. Yeah. Well, she's actually done very well for herself. She's become quite a dance hall banger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we can say that. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, I'm so sorry. Uh, don't think we can call her a dance hall banger. I, say, no. I think we can say she probably makes dance hall bangers. No, she's done really well for herself. Mm. Uh, she's actually become quite a bona fide dance act. She works oh. with Jack Jones, Jonas Blue, David Guetta. So she's doing really well. She worked with Avicii. I, I'm not too sure whether she has or not, but the past 11 years she's been working her bum off and like many of these people that go on these shows who disappear and you never hear from them again. Gareth Gates. <laughs> you can say that, not me. <laughs> he does a few pantos every now and then. He's doing all right. Only when, the, only when his universal credit says he has to do a job. <laughs> <laughs> You've met him then, haven't you? <laughs> I met him, well, I didn't met, meet him. I watched him do um, play Jean Valjean in mm. Les Mis. Bit ropey. A bit ropey. Was he not any good? No, he's been awful. Poor thing. 
Anyway, back to Becky. Uh, yes, <laughs> lovely Becky Hill. Yeah, lovely Becky. She's been doing these secret Hilton Hotel gigs. Ooh, yeah. Uh, sounds she exciting. She turns up as a, an artist they don't know who's going to play. And out, out she comes uh, for the thing. I'm, I'm sure there'll be other artists at other events. That but, sounds like a great fun idea. Yeah, and it's more of an intimate venue kind of a thing rather than those great big concert halls where you're standing behind loads of people with their camera phones up. Like when Callie did her anti tour. Mm -hmm. I went to that. I was very happy. <laughs> did you enjoy yourself? I did. She was just stood on, on, on stage just singing songs that I knew. Mm -hmm. All this modern rubbish. <laughs> she was doing I Was Be So Lucky. She did that uh, Where the Wild Roses Grow with Nick Cave. Mm -hmm. one. All the stuff that you wouldn't expect Carrie to sing anywhere. She sang them. And the bassist that was to her left was hot. <laughs> <laughs> so you enjoyed yourself for many I, reasons. I like enjoyed that. the show for two reasons. <laughs> Um, one of the other things about Becky Hill is she identifies as queer now. Now, she's uh, been with her partner for quite a while. It's Charlie Gardner, and they're now engaged. Um, but <laughs> Charlie Gardner. <laughs> I'm such a child, and I don't care. She's dating someone called Charlie Gardner. Uh, well, yes. Uh, uh, apparently, they're very much in love, and Good. they're going to get engaged. But she does say that she identifies as queer because she has uh, sexual relations with ladies. Um, and a Charlie Gardner. <laughs> it sounds like something rude. It does sound like something rude. Uh, but she says that it's important to her to identify as queer, mm -hmm. um, so it's not just about uh, titillating the straight male. Her partner's <laughs> name just titillates me. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> and finally... I, I, I don't know how it's come round to this so soon, but it's panto season coming up. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, uh, yeah, we're not going into that. Still over there. I think you need to have a look at our Katie Price. Why oh, is she playing the tunnel? Uh, no, she guess guess which panto she's going to be in. I'm, I'm sure Priscilla it's still not... a queen of the desert for that. <laughs> No, she's going to be in Sleeping Beauty. Now, this apparently is not Maleficent at all. The character she's playing, which is the wicked fairy godmother, is Caraboos. Can you do the Fandango? <laughs> the bolts of lightning, very, very frightening, be Galileo. It does sound like she could what? go back out to that any moment, to be fair. That is something it Freddie would like wear. It looks like she's about to hit into uh, bloody... I am what I am any minute. <laughs> well, if there was ever an argument for, for a woman drag queen, I think we have it there with Katie Price. But um, yes, they're going to be appearing at the Marks and Sparks Bank, Bank Arena in Liverpool. Oh, same place as Eurovision. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's where she got the boas from. <laughs> Maybe the leftover left from the Eurovisions. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a withered gay under there somewhere going, oh, what time is it? <laughs> I've had hangover since May. Uh, um, but how, what would you give that in terms of points? For what? Drag? Because <laughs> it is... It, it's... She did Eurovision once, didn't she? No. In a pink leotard. On purpose. And she was pregnant at the time. What? It was dreadful. Well, she can't sing for Toffee. No, she really couldn't. <laughs> she even acknowledges it herself. What's now. that song she sang with Peter Andre? Oh, I can't remember, but that was a similar car crash. Oh, it was, the, it was that slightly weird one from Aladdin. But oh, it, a like, whole new world. Yeah, a whole new world. Don't yeah. you dare close your eyes. All right, calm down. <laughs> Hold your breath, honestly, it gets better. Yeah, go yeah. on your YouTube, look it up. Her in a pink leotard. Very, very, very tight. It's a whole thing. It's, it's just a whole thing. I... I don't want to body shame her because I know she spent a lot of money and time on that body. Mm -hmm. um, but I do not believe the cut of that dress is flattering at all. Around the midriff section. She could do with a bit of padding on the hips. Or, or something cinching. Michelle Visage would be ripping into her about not having a cinched waist there. I think for a character called Caraboos, it really depends on how much is going on in the back. Yeah. I am just waiting for it to go, I am what I am. Fag hanging outside of her mouth and a, a gin tonic that's mostly gin at the side of her. In a pub that's like thick with smoke. You know, a proper old ropey drag queen. That's what I'm seeing there. But good for her. Good for her. And that's the showbiz this week. I am what it's all about my head now. Katie Price doing I am what I am. Um, well, thanks for that, Mist. Always good to know that Katie Price has got some sort of career. Well, she's making a coin. One. You're welcome. But stick around, as next it's Mike in The Buzz.
You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist and Mike. Now let's get ready to find the innards of the internet, as it's Mike and the Buzz. How do you feel about buses? Mm, as long as the wheels stay on. Do they fall off often? <laughs> they can do. <laughs> if the driver goes beep, beep, beep. <laughs> The wheels fall off if the driver goes beep, beep, beep. <laughs> That's how we did the song when I was in primary school. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is a story about people on a commute in Brighton, mm -hmm. right, who had a shock as one of their commuters was not whom they would have expected to be a commuter. So what would you, what would shock you if you're on a bus in a commute and suddenly someone got on and it's like, oh, that's amazing, that's a shock. What would it be? Oh, like who some would... celebrity or something? Like whom? Like Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. Yeah, I can imagine her getting on a bus would be quite peculiar. Chris Hemsworth. Oh, I think I'd have other thoughts than that's unusual. Give him a lick. Oh. Um, well, this is a story about a donkey. Well, a pony. The same thing, really. They're both horses with massive. <laughs> um, got on the number 57 bus towards Ex Exeter. Well, I hope he was well behaved and didn't make an arse of himself. No, didn't have the correct change, so I couldn't get on. Um, but yeah, just wandered up. And, and as you can see, that man there just gently taking a picture of the pony getting on the bus, because that's hilarious. What was it thinking? I want to get to Exeter. <laughs> I don't think it was, I think it was just following a lot of people onto a bus. Is there a glue factory there? In Exeter? Yeah. Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> We we'll get much of a, much glue out of a pony though. The small horses, aren't they? Little, 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 little bones. Yeah, little bones. Um, but yeah, just thought it was a nice, interesting little story about a, a pony that decided to get the bus. How very adorable! Yeah. Is this really what you spend your time doing, looking on the internet for? Well, it's that old porn. Um, <laughs> wasn't what I was looking for when I googled donkey getting on a bus. Um, use your imaginations, people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, got on the bus, they, they managed to shoo him away, so he got off eventually. But I thought it was a nice little story about a pony getting on a bus. Uh, well, I have to admit, that would be very, very unusual. It exactly. certainly tops Nicki Minaj. Well, I don't think it topped Nicki Minaj. They're quite hung, aren't they? <laughs> well... It's illegal as well, I think. Uh, that would be illegal, but yeah. I, don't, I, I think she might be able to handle it. I'm not saying anything, just because <laughs> I don't want Licky Minaj's vagina like trying to sue me. Um, <laughs> Licky Minaj's vagina. <laughs> yeah, I'm Jackie. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's Jackie. Um, what else have you got for us then? Another mode of transportation: mm -hmm. crossing of water. So boats? No, not a boat. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been zorbing? No. Just where you get in the big balls, like the big hamster balls. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. I know everything about big balls. Okay. Have you ever been inside one and thrown yourself down a hill? Um, no, I haven't done it, but I'd really like to. It does look like fun. It looks like fun, but I'm always slightly scared that, you know, you might go over a bit of broken glass and it pop. Mm-hmm. And then you're in a ball that's popping. It's like... I'd want to do... You know that race you can do down the hill to get hold of a piece of cheese? Cheese wheel. Cheese, cheese yeah, racing. the big cheese wheel race. Now, that seems dangerous, but do it in a Zorb. You see, I've done the cheese cheese racing. You have? I have. Did, how did you survive? Well, quite, I cheated. I used, a, I used a gentle slope and a baby bell. <laughs> but it's the same idea. I was chasing that. I, wasn't even, I, didn't, I didn't drop it. It was a picnic and it just rolled off. It's, it works. It works. One step and a grab. But it's technically the same thing. It, yes. Te yeah. I, I, I fully support your delusion. Yeah, it's not a delusion. It happened. Baby bell rolled away and then grabbed it. <laughs> cheese racing. Um... What are you talking about? Zorbing. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, What's uh, this got to do with water, though? This, that's all over hills and dales in weird parts and of England. Well, a Florida man, uh -huh. which is my favourite phrase ever in the history mm -hmm. of time, a Florida man, um, has decided to go a little bit extra and, in, and develop a, a hamster wheel mm -hmm. okay, that will go on water. So there he is. He's, he's welded together a hamster wheel that will float. Right? And he started to take it towards the sea. 
and it purely powered by him running his little heart himself, out. By him going in the inside and crawling through. Did he have a little yeah. tube with water in it for him? <laughs> yeah, a little salt lick. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was in the sea, so he's already quite salty. Um, <laughs> no, but he, he, was try he was on his way to the sea, and the police had to stop him and went, he can't do that. Did, what type of space of ocean was he? Was he like trying to just get across the bay or all the way from Liverpool to avoid the Titanic? Or well, no, he was in he was in Florida. Well, yes, right, in the Keys, and he was just he was just heading out to sea. There was no actual plan. He was just going to go out to sea in it. What is wrong with these people? Have you never Googled a Florida man? I, I am aware of the, the trend That's of a Florida so man, fun. yes. Yeah. And it always comes with the most bonkers, batshit, crazy stuff. Yes, a Florida man. So if you Google my birthday, and mm -hmm. a Florida man, all right, it talks about a Florida man who was basically found trying to push his fist into his own anus. Oh, well, we've all done that. In public. <laughs> And when asked why, he said, because I wondered. <laughs> Wanted to see what, if I could. Curiosity is a wonderful thing. And it kills cats. It does. Yeah. And if, like cats, you want to be killed with curiosity, find us on at the Cud TV on social media. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. Towels are wonderful things. Mm -hmm. right? You can use them in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can have them as a you know, protective cover. Mm -hmm. um, you can have them after a shower or a bath. Mm -hmm. but how frequently would you wash your towel? Well, I did have a friend at university who was under the view that you only use them once you're clean, so okay. they never really effectively get dirty. But they do breed germs because they're, they're, they're um, warm and moist. Well, it depends on where you're shoving them. No, because when they dry off, they're, they're moist. Mm -hmm. And you put them up to dry. Mm -hmm. But they don't dry straight away, so that's when they start to get bacteria and mildew. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm a strictly every other use kind of person. Because mm -hmm. I want to, you know, not kill the turtles. Mm -hmm. But also I want a nice, fluffy, clean towel. Mm. Well, I, I, I've never figured out how to make my towels nice and fluffy. Whenever they come out of the washing machine and I hang them up... Because I do wash them every use. Okay, who in every use? Because I, 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 I am aware they might be a bit manky and I don't quite like the idea of it. Plus, I had this friend at university who had that theory and it was revolting. So I wash my towels because I'm a clean person. Um, You're a coloured towel person or a white towel No, person. very much. Well, they start out white. They're white when I get them from the hotel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always get white towels because you can put them through a bleach cycle. <laughs> get white again. Um, <laughs> no, but um, they've come out with a study. And they've, they've surveyed the people. They've polled the people mm -hmm. and said, how often do you um, clean your towels? Oh, and what's the answer? The average mm -hmm. was once. Ever? A year. Whoa. Yeah, average cleaning is once a year. That's revolting. Mm-hmm. Now, f my first brain thought was, well, I have tons of towels, because mm -hmm. you never throw away a towel, you just buy new ones. Yeah. Right? So maybe they've just accumulated a lot of towels, and so they only need, to, they've got 365 towels. Everybody needs a rag towel, yeah, for sure. So, so maybe they've got, you know, 365 towels, because they've got one a day, so they only need to wash them once a year. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the thought process. But no, 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 people with one towel would wash it once a year. That makes me feel quite queasy. <laughs> yeah. I think that's quite revolting. I, I, you see, the thing, the thing is that I'm there going, okay, so you wash, you've got one towel mm. and you wash once every 12 months. How often do they wash? No, I'm thinking sexy time. Ooh. I have sexy time towels. Yeah, but that's because you collect them over a year and have hundreds of them. Every, like I said, everybody needs a rag towel and that's what I mean for. Oh, no, I have sexy time towels. Bath towels and then the rag towels, you know, the ones for the dog. Do you have different colours for? I have different coloured towels. I have uh, coloured towels for guests and. No, they're all white. Towels for me. No, they're all white. They've got different patterns on that. You know, they're oh, turning into my mum. Talking about <laughs> towels. <laughs> but they've all got different sides. Welcome to this light entertainment yeah. show. They've all got different banding at the top, so you can tell which one's which. <laughs> right, so if it's got like a big thick stripe, right, that's mm -hmm. a sexy time towel. Why is that a sexy time towel? Because particular? they're the ones I bought for sexy time. Okay. Right. And then I have the... the I have rubber sheets. No, I don't. I really... I don't. I, I don't. 
and latex. <laughs> um, <laughs> PVC coated. Um, no, but so, I did buy a leather sofa precisely because it would be wipe clean, though it has to be said. Mm, uh, but you get sweaty bum. Mm. Mm. Yeah, mm. I'm just thinking. Yeah. Anyway, mm, sorry, um, I was, so, yeah, so got lost then. Yeah. Um, so you get different towels for different things. So mm -hmm. it's like these people don't have a sexy time towel. They're using their bathroom towel that they wash once a year for cleaning up bodily fluids <laughs> and then drying themselves off with it <laughs> and semen is a persistent stain Oof. So, yeah. as we know from experience yes it is um, but that's all from the buzz this week wow uh, thank you Mike uh, how refreshing uh, stick around as coming up we have wish you were queer Portland stick around You're watching Chewing the Cud. Mike recently went all the way to Portland, USA. <laughs> I did indeed, yeah. Um, so, um, I've got a new job, which is exciting. It's in mm -hmm. the travel industry. Okay. Uh, which means I got to go to our head office in Portland for two weeks. That's nice. Really nice. Um, and let me just say, Portland is a very, very queer-friendly city. Okay. okay. Um, it was... I got off the... You know, drove up into the city in, a, in an Uber because I'm not driving on the wrong side of the road. Um, and the number of Pride Progress flags that were flying, not even just the Pride flag, the mm -hmm. Progress one, everywhere. Was it Pride at the time? No. Oh, wow. Right. It was literally everywhere there were Pride flags open, mm -hmm. right? Um, and went into a couple of restaurants and places where it said everybody is welcome in this restaurant, irrespective of gender, ethnic background, belief structure, and it listed off a whole long list of things. Mm -hmm. And I said, if you don't like it, please go somewhere else. How did that make you feel? Really, really positive. Mm -hmm. it's so, it was so welcoming as a city. It was very much like a uh, very Manchester vibe, mm -hmm. right? Um, but with you know, a lot more inclusion. Mm -hmm. So there are places in Manchester where I wouldn't walk around holding someone else's hand. Mm -hmm. But in Portland, everybody's holding hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll, the churches were saying welcome to people. There was no you know, right wing baptism. Baptist, there was a Baptist church that still had the pride flag outside. So what is it about Portland that makes it that kind of city? So it was, it was found as a planned city. So uh -huh. as you go out, it's, it's very much on that grid pattern. Oh, so it's the Milton Keynes of America. Milton Keynes, but done well. <laughs> right, no roundabouts. Not a single roundabout anywhere, right? Um, and it's all very green space. It's on a river and mm -hmm. you're se separated by a river and stuff. And it, it's very, very, very open and honest, so much so that it legalised marijuana consumption. Ah, yes, I've heard right. they started doing that over in America. Yeah, um, and it go to a dispensary, <laughs> which I thought was quite a nice name for it, because it's better than pot shop, which is what yeah. I thought you'd call it. Um, but yeah. And uh, did you partake whilst you were there? I didn't partake in Mary Jane, mm -hmm. just because I'm not very good with it. Um, <laughs> How would you know? It's illegal over here. But I've tried it in places where it's legal. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, mother, don't drop down now. Um, so... Um, I don't do very well on it, but mm -hmm. it was great because people, it was treated more like alcohol. Mm. So people would go out and, you know, oh, I want to go and do this thing. So they went and got some. Well, that's always been the argument that the, uh, alcohol is a far worse thing than mm -hmm. some of the drugs that are illegal. Yeah. It's better than some of the drugs that are illegal because, you know. Heroin's a bit Moorish, mm -hmm. as they say. No, 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 no. Yeah, heroin's a bit Moorish. I'll help it. Um, but yeah, it had a, a very relaxed vibe about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But homelessness was a really big problem. Oh, okay. Okay. But I also felt, you know, you get a homeless person come up to you and sometimes you feel a little bit intimidated. Yes, yeah. I can understand that. There wasn't any of that feeling, right? So the people begging for money weren't saying, you know, any change, mate, mm -hmm. right? They were coming over and saying, I'm sorry for disturbing you. I find right. that with... I, I used to live down in London and mm -hmm. the difference between... The, the homeless people who were down there and the homeless people when I moved up to Manchester mm -hmm. was very, very much that. I Have you ever been anywhere that's that progressive and, and open? Um, that's why I moved to Manchester. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I have not travelled the world as extensively as your good self. There was a time that I did live in Finland. 
Finland's got a good reputation. Yeah, Finland was absolutely lovely. Um, but I was I was there for only a f it was only a few months uh, mm. living there for a, a gig working for a Fat Man with Beard. Um, but there were oh, a Christmas. Yeah. Um, you worked, well, 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 you worked for Father Christmas. Yeah, it's a different story. Uh, <laughs> I want to hear about you working for Father Christmas. Is this like an actual Father Christmas? Yeah, I've worked for Father Christmas. Why have we not been told this before? Um, because it's not relevant. <laughs> Why is it not relevant? You work for for the, a, a fat guy that comes down people's chimneys once a year. Well, yeah. He, well, it did, like, there's actually five of them. They're really, 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 That's really some very niche porn. They're de they're demons for playing poker. Okay. Absolutely, and, and they can drink like a fish. It's absolutely insane. Um, okay. But the reason the reason I <laughs> the reason I brought them up. I, I'll tell you, there are many stories from, from, from that, and I'll, but this is not about, we're talking about you in Portland. But there were lots of different people who were working there. They were from, like, Russia and from Ukraine and all sorts of things. But this is 20 years ago. And less tense. Less, yeah, a little less. Well, little, there were still problems, but yeah. a little less tense. Um, and they had never met a gay person before. Okay. And it was very, like, once they knew, I, I didn't... I didn't even think to keep it a secret, mm -hmm. but once they knew, it was very much uh, oh, not inviting me to go to the sa like saunas were constant, mm -hmm. and then suddenly it was like oh no 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 not you, yeah because of the threat of bumming because of the threat of bumming yeah it was very very peculiar but I presented my best I didn't get offended by it and then hopefully whatever experience they had with me they took back and went oh. They can be a normal person um, and back into their little I, sheltered I, lives. I would hope so too, but Russia, probably not. Probably not, yeah. no. But um, yeah, it helped me out. It was a very interesting, and it was the first time I'd been abroad mm -hmm. and realised uh, that there are different cultures out there who have different approaches mm -hmm. and different thoughts about that and that you have to be aware of that. 100%. Um, there were times where, you know, because my first thought was America is going to be guns, mm -hmm. right? Um, and on the plane, there, there was some, I was, I was a single traveller, right? So it was, there was a couple of times where I thought, going, am I saying something a bit too gay here? Mm -hmm. You know, is there going to be someone that's going to start hitting me on the head with the Bible? Yeah, and it's weird being in a position where you're having to ed edit yourself again. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm old enough to remember the days of self-editing self -editing mm -hmm. severely. Yeah. Um, and I know that culture, and to be reintroduced to it, mm -hmm. uh, weird. Yeah, well, w um, earlier in the year, I went to um, Malaysia, mm -hmm. I went to Kuala Lumpur, and that is where homosexuality is illegal. Ouch. So I had to make that change for two weeks and edit myself, and it was a very difficult thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Why did you go there? Like, I, 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 I want to protect myself, mm -hmm. and two, you ain't got my money. I, would, I wouldn't go to such countries. So I, it was a, a choice. So I had the opportunity to go to Borneo mm -hmm. and meet orangutans, and that's always been on the bucket list. Mm -hmm. But to get it's in Malaysia. Yeah. Right. Um, and you know the hotels there were very they were okay with westerns because they with my friend, mm -hmm. so gay, um, and you know another man, and they were like, is it two beds or is it a double bed? So the westernised hotels are aware, were aware and yeah. trying to accommodate, yeah. But you could see in the faces a little bit of relief when I went, no, no, two singles. Mm -hmm. It was like, ah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but the self-editing, I didn't have to do any of that in Portland, mm -hmm. right? Um, I was able to be my 100% authentic self, even when drunk at a drag bar, Okay. right? Um, saying some, I was being very flirty. Mm -hmm. um, forward. F forward, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was a taking, whore. Yeah, I was taking no as an answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> a dirty, dirty slut. <laughs> okay. I didn't f in the toilets. Um, we went back to the hotel. Um, <laughs> We've all done that, don't yeah. we? <laughs> um, but it was very much a, a case of going, you know, I, I didn't have to worry about going out in the street drunk mm -hmm. after going to a gay bar, right, and getting my head bashed in, walking through, you know, a, an area I didn't know mm -hmm. because it was that everywhere so welcoming. Yeah. Right. 
if anyone is going over to the US, I would recommend going to Portland 110%. Right, it's a beautiful city, mm -hmm. right, and it's so welcoming. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good place to go. Lovely. Yeah. Well, I, I've I've sworn off America whilst Trump was in charge, but obviously things are better now. And whilst there's a short window before he gets in again, he won't get in. Again. <laughs> no, he won't. Uh, I may well take you up on that. Yeah, um, it, it is a really lovely city, and there's lots of places in America that I wouldn't go to. So Texas is one of them. I have been to Texas. Okay. I was very, 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 very young at the time. Well, not, not stupidly young, but I was about 15. Okay. And the rodeos and that culture is amazing, but the heat is insane. Mm -hmm. You have to run from building to car to building because you just can't survive it. It's, it's yeah. nuts. Well, Portland got up to 42 degrees for a week while I was there. Um, and then they had a fire in the mountains. Ouch. So um, stayed a lot inside mm -hmm. because the heat, stay inside the air conditioning, then can't breathe outside, stay inside. Mm -hmm. So um, unfortunately, my, my trip, I didn't get to do some of the fun things. They've got some beautiful gardens there. Mm -hmm. um, they've got you know, a rose garden. It's the Rose State, it's known as, because Rose Grow in Luella. Um, they've got like rivers and water sports on the river, and they've got like lakes and stuff and the mountains, and it's got a bit of everything there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a shame that I didn't get to do more. But I will be going back, I've decided. Mm. Well, sounds like you had a fantastic time. Really good, yeah. Well, let's have a quick break and then we'll have a look at something more cultural. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now, let's talk about food in America. It's got, well, a reputation, mm -hmm. shall we say. So I brought some snacks or snacks for us to try. Okay, I, America's a rather rotund country for food, and I can yeah. see lots of sweets here. Well, that's okay. We're not. Well, it's candy. 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 Um, so we're not going to go deep into them all. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've got a Kit Kat. Well, we have Kit Kats over we here. We do, but it's an American Kit Kat, so there's your choice. You see. Okay. Um, a Reese's peanut butter cup. Oh yes, yeah. No, I'm aware of those. Yeah, yeah. A York peppermint patty. As in the character from Peanuts. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Name that. Um, a Hershey's chocolate bar. Yes, I've heard of Hershey's. Okay. So that, that, you may pick one of those four. Which would you like to try? Uh, I'm not a big fan of peppermint, but okay. I will. I'll try a. I'll try a Hershey's and I'll try a Kit Kat. Just see if they're any different. Okay, so you, have a, you can have a Hershey's and you can have a Kit Kat. Thank you very much. I'm just going for a York peppermint patty because they're pretty delicious. Okay. Um, now, I have to give you a forewarning. These did come over in my hand luggage on the plane, and um, a rather large gentleman may have on them. <laughs> that large so, gentleman? <laughs> no, no, no. It was, it was a large gentleman um, who I put my bag on the seat, mm -hmm. and he basically sat down to let someone pass. Like, well, he sat in my bag. But yes. Um, well, you enjoy your Hershey's bar. It does just look like a normal looks, piece of chocolate. It looks like a piece of chocolate, yeah. Tastes a little bit like vomit. That's all right to begin with. That's not as bad as I thought, is to be not? fair. No. Okay, I always thought they were a bit vomity. Um, so this is a York peppermint patty that got squished. This is like a... It's a cheaper chocolate. It's a much cheaper chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, peppermint patty is a... Basically, it's an after eight mint mm -hmm. on steads. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> so it's, like, it's very, very... Oh, that does look... Is that quite gritty? No. It's a fondant kind of thing. Oh, I okay. Delicious. It's an after eight mint, but you know an after eight mint, you go, mm -hmm. oh, it's insipid. This punches you in the face with the mintiness. It's good food. Okay. Even though it's American chocolate, it's good. Well, I'm, I'm glad, because I'm not a fan of mint. Um, okay, let's see if Kit Kat's any really different to our oh, Kit Kat, the proper Kit Kat. They come in fingers. I do love a chunky, though. What are, you doing? what are you doing? What? Why are you eating it weird? What? Oh, taking no, out a finger. Kit Kat. Kit Kat. Taking out a finger? No. One finger at a time, or don't take two at once like some people. Oh, that's gritty. Yeah. Kit Kat, that. You're weird. But You're weird and wrong. Yeah. They're not as good Kit Kats. No, that's gross. Yeah. The, the wafers are too not spaced out enough, and it's a bit... Mmm. No, I'm not a fan of that. No. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what I like. <laughs> Do with Kit Kats, bite off both ends, stick it in a coffee, suck it up like a straw. Absolutely gorgeous. 
not with that monstrosity. No. That was, I do it when you do oh. it, when you eat them properly. I know that. Uh, that's just wrong. What? We've had letters saying that that's not wrong. <laughs> I wrote the letters, but they still can't. <laughs> um, how do you feel about bounties? Oh, no, I can't stand a bounty. Can you not? Okay. No, no, I'm not because a fan of bounty. We're a bit sick and wrong. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is an almond version of a bounty. I like an almond. It's okay. good for your gut. Yeah. Is yeah. it? Okay. Yeah, good for your gut. I have milked an almond. But this is coconut and almond. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an, it's a, it's a bounty mm -hmm. that they popped a, a, an almond in. It looks like a, a chocolate covered car, a toy car. <laughs> um, okay, uh, a bit dubious, but. What's wrong with that? Yeah. Mm. When you said it was like bounty, it's exactly like a bounty. It's horrible. But with an almond in it. That doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I quite like it. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of bounty. But I that, think there's the almond enough. Mm. It's still really cheap chocolate, and the coconut doesn't mask it. Because the coconut's not expensive either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, not as bad as I thought. Nowhere near as good as what we get. I'm not finishing either of them. That is a monstrosity. Oh, oh get that away from me. <laughs> well, thank goodness for Cadbury's. Oh, bring me Bourneville. Hell is forgiven. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's not fair. <laughs> okay. Now, oh. I've heard it mentioned you may enjoy a twink on occasion. I, as long as it's cream filled. Good news. Mm. I've brought you a, a cream filled twink. You've brought me a cream filled twink. Bring in the chat. Oh, it's a Twinkie. Sorry. Oh, Twinkie. okay. Yeah, I thought it was Troy Savan was walking in. <laughs> the oh, you would, wouldn't you, Troy Savan? It's oh. a top too. Oh. He has admitted he's not a bottom. Oh. So yeah, I brought a Twink for your face. Okay. Uh, I've again. actually always wanted to try a Twinkie. Have you? Yeah, I've always okay. wanted to try. I will it. let you go first then, because I have I've, I've sampled all of these already. That's because you're a greedy pig. I was in America. <laughs> Well, you have to be a greedy pig, otherwise. Get deported. Oh, oh, it's a bit. It's not very firm, is it? They got sound. <laughs> no one's firm. I think uh, am I before. trying? To, am I trying to Just swallow a twink that's already been destroyed by your bottom? Wouldn't be the first man. Okay. <laughs> it's giving me flashbacks. <laughs> Pop it in your face. <laughs> Heard that before. Mmm. Oh, it's all right. Yeah. Oh, it's got a bit of jam to it. Uh-huh. I didn't realise there was a bit of jam. A little bit of jam. So, it's like a Swiss roll mm. finger mm. with creamy jam in the middle of it. That's not bad. I see why they're popular. Mm. I bet it's really fattening. You can tell that this doesn't have any labelling on it to no. say how fattening it is. Let's put it this way. I bought a pack of ten. Mm -hmm. There's three left. But there's one left now. I can see why this is nice. Mm. This is like, America can't do chocolate, obviously, but can't do chocolate, but they can do mm. sugar. Mmm. So I'm very there's I'm finishing. Because okay. um. what I thought about doing was mm. I thought they should be really good at a, a finger in a trifle. I know I'm a 30s housewife sometimes. But those instead of the, 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 the fingers at the bottom of the trifle, having those instead mm -hmm. soaked, soaked with gin. Oh no, you use sherry in a trifle. I use gin in a trifle. I don't like sherry. What kind of monster are you? Have you seen the way you eat a Kit Kat? Yeah, I've seen the way you eat a Kit Kat. Okay. <laughs> now, the next thing. Now, Americans can't do chocolate, but this I, I quite enjoy. Oh, is this the hostess cookie? I've heard of this the hostess cookie. cookie. This is not a cookie. Well, they have weird idea about what's a cookie and what's a cake and what's, what's a biscuit. This is something that is lovingly known as a ding dong. Oh, I have heard of a ding dong. Yeah, which I went. You know, Shout out to Leslie Phillips if you get that reference. Mm. Ding dong. Um, which, as I said. You just, really did sit on all of wasn't these, didn't you? sat on them. With my light little pastoria, barely a dent will have been made. These have been destroyed. Yeah. Absolutely. Ah. Just put it in your face and eat it. 
heard that before. <laughs> um, yeah, but things have not crumbled so badly in my mouth before. Mm. Oh, it's got a, a creamy filling. I've got a creamy filling as well. Yeah, but it's back to chocolate again. Mm -hmm. uh, it's powdery and nasty and cheap. Oh, yeah, you know, I like it. No. I like it. No. I think we've decided that America can't do chocolate. Oh, we've known that for years. Mm. Um, oh, I've got one of that. Very much like a wagon wheel without the biscuity bit. Is this, is this good TV, me vomiting? <laughs> We've not vomited yet, you've just been spitting instead of swallowing, which is just rude. Um. <laughs> and so unlike me. Mm. Mm. Have you heard of Milk Duds before? You've got all the classics. The classics. I know of all of them from like the movies. From the movies and the films mm. and the TV shows. Well, what do you think these are? Well, um, it says on the box they're candy made with caramel and chocolate. Yeah. But they sound like they're... I can read. Well done. Can't do it on the auto key, though. Um, <laughs> and that's because I can't spell. So, yeah. Um, have, a, have a milk dud. Oh, these look like... Um, Rabbit poo. Yeah, but we have we have it, um, when it's covered raisins. Sort of thing, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, still feeling queasy from the, from the hostess thing. The ding-dong. <laughs> these... Are a quality street toffee penny that doesn't rip your fillings out. It is a quality street toffee penny. That doesn't rip your fillings out. With again disgusting chocolate. You get through that quite quickly though. The caramel is fine, yeah. Mm. Yeah. The toffee penny bit is great. I get why they are a thing in America. Mm. And it disappears quite quickly. Yeah. Unlike a toffee penny that you're fishing out your, your fillings for six, six mm. weeks after. That makes the chocolate forgivable. Exactly. Mm. I can live with those. I can live with those. Okay. Now, you get to choose between the Swedish fish or the Twizzlers. Well, the Twizzlers just look like red uh, rope candy. Well, we have that over here. Mm. But I bet it's more sugary. Oh, oh. <laughs> that ding dong's coming back. Ding dong. Oh. Oh. I, I, I'm not your friend. You're horrible. Shall we end on a high? How do you feel about mini cheddars? Oh, come on, cheddar. Well, these American mm. dancers to um, mini cheddar's called Cheese It's. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. But it's an American mini cheddar, so it kind of it has the flavour of, of feet. It absolutely has. <laughs> and, and the saltiness of it is soaked up all that horrible ding dong saliva. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's not as revolting as the rest of it, but... Not all of it was revolting. You enjoyed a milk dud and you enjoyed a Twinkie. Oh. So as part of that Anglo-American collaboration and as one of us is gagging, um, <laughs> it's almost <laughs> the end of the show. Remember to join us on our social media at The Could TV on all your usual places. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.